All right, we are recording. Welcome everyone. Um, today we are talking about the single use plastic bag ban, which goes into effect October 1st. Um, we are joined here today with uh, Shannon Jones from the Department of Ecology. She's the Western Washington Materials Management Coordinator. And of course, we have Samantha Louderback uh, from our own government affairs team here at the Washington Hospitality Association. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the Q&A. Uh, we will try to get them answered on air. And uh, with that, I will go ahead and hand it off to you, Samantha and Shannon. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you, Shannon, for taking time to meet with us. Um, as everyone knows, the bag ban that was originally uh, supposed to go into effect January 1st, 2021, was delayed due to the pandemic. Uh, now that means that we are approaching the deadline and implementation of October 1st. So uh, Shannon is here today to help us walk through the ins and outs and how it impacts our industry and, and how to navigate some of the, the questions and challenges that we know are coming. Um, Shannon, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Shannon Jones. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to Samantha for inviting me to speak today and for everyone involved in organizing this event. Um, I will make this PowerPoint available after today's meeting and my contact info and all the links I'll share today uh, will be available there um, if you have follow-up questions. Um, so for a quick overview of everything that we will cover today, I will discuss the October 1st effective date, uh, the previous implementation delays that Sam mentioned, the basic requirements of the law and the outreach resources we have for businesses and local officials to communicate the details uh, to their staff and the public. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about um, the complaint and enforcement process and give a quick preview of some of the other new plastics laws like the single use service wear on request law that passed this session. Um, and then hopefully we'll have plenty of time to open up for questions. Um, so as Samantha mentioned, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic caused significant delays in the original January 2021 implementation timeline for the law. Uh, as many of you have likely experienced manufacturer diversion of materials to the production of COVID-19 PPE and other products caused supply chain shortages of the compliant bags. Uh, many businesses and representatives of groups like the Washington Hospitality Association stepped forward to cite concerns about being able to acquire the bags that were needed to comply with the law. Um, on January 19th, Governor Inslee and the legislature extended the emergency proclamation to delay the start date for the bag ban until the end of the COVID-19 state of emergency. Um, but then on July 13th, the governor's office rescinded this emergency proclamation amending the language to delay the bag ban until October 1st. Um, so as an overview, as of October 1st, all single use plastic t-shirt bags that are traditionally provided at point of sale or through delivery and pickup will be banned. Um, this is the, um, like just sort of a graphic to uh, cover that and we can make this available to you just because it's like a quick and dirty, uh, what you need to know. Um, but I'll go over the, the requirements in detail here. Um, so, Compliant bags can be made available to customers for an eight cent per bag charge shown on a receipt to the customer. Uh, paper bags are required to contain at least 40% post-consumer recycled content, wheat straw, or a combination of those materials. Um, thick reusable plastic bags are required to contain at least 20% post-consumer recycled content and to be at least 2.25 mil thick. Um, both types of bags must be labeled somewhere on the exterior of the bag with their post-consumer recycled content percentage. The plastic bags need to be labeled reusable and have the mill thickness printed on the bag. Uh, those requirements apply to virtually all food service, grocery, retail sectors, including temporary vendors like farmers markets and food trucks. Um, I also want to note that the compostable bags may be provided free of charge. However, we're strongly advising against this unless you have worked with your local composting facility to establish whether or not they accept compostable film as most of the facilities in this state do not. Um, if you're in the King County area, it's probably a safe bet, but almost anywhere else it's not. 
Um, so the ban really only does apply to the single use bags used to bag customer items. It doesn't apply to produce type of bags that are used in store for bulk items. It doesn't apply to newspaper or dry cleaning bags, uh, trash bags or pet waste bags that are sold in store or small film bags that are used to wrap items in like a deli setting for sanitary purposes. Um, oh, I'm go back. Shannon, uh, other important you... Sure. I just wanted to ask a question. So we do know that the uh, the graphic says produce, meat, bulk foods, but it's my understanding as well. Those product or that type of bag can be used for some of our items that may have some cross contamination issues. Uh, could you? Am I accurate? Um, so like the the produce film bags can be used like for anything with cross contamination risk, like if you're using it in the deli, if you're using it for uh, raw meats, uh, fish, things like that. Um, yeah, is that your question? I'm sorry. I'm yeah, so it, this is really specific to grocery. So I'm just trying to put it into context of what a restaurant tour would use this for. So I'm thinking the soups that you're sending to go that have a cross contamination with something else in a bag. Um, it's my understanding under the law that these bags are uh, allowed within um, our establishments as well for cross contamination. So I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, the the like thin, uh, smaller produce type of bags are definitely allowed in that setting as well. It's it's just the sort of like t-shirt bags that are used at point of sale that are banned entirely. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Great question. Um, so uh, the other important detail is that all the food benefits customers are exempt from the eight cent fee, even if they're using another payment method for the purchase. Um, they only need to show proof of their benefits card, um, you know, SNAP, EBT, WIC, um, to be exempt. Food banks are also exempt, but they are encouraged to try and shift away from single-use plastics when possible. Uh, many businesses have asked if they can provide some kind of uh, reuse receptacle for customers to take single-use bags for their items. Um, but this isn't necessarily permitted. We really want people to be um, either bringing in their own bags to reuse or um, purchasing the bags in store. Um, so this would still technically be providing them a point of sale. Um, also, the eight cent charge is not a tax or a fee. Um, it's kept by the businesses and it needs to be shown on the customer's receipt as a taxable retail sale. Um, Samantha was sharing with me that there have been some questions about the um, the tax deferral, and I'm probably not the correct uh, contact for answering that question, but I do have a really good contact with uh, Department of Revenue. And if people want to send those questions in, I'm happy to follow up uh, with him and try and get that information to you as soon as possible. Great, Shannon. Um, just a little bit um, extra so everyone watching understands. I think the questions are coming in uh, around this bag is uh, the one, the eight, one eighth mil bag or the thicker plastic is actually going to cost me 22 cents, but the, the law says eight cents. Can I charge the 22 cents? The answer is yes. Correct, Shannon? Yes. yes. So you can charge actually any amount that you want for these bags. And frankly, in terms of intent of the law, I say <laughs> the more, the better. The, the intent is to incentivize people to bring in their own reusable bags. Um, but the, it's just the minimum is eight cents and th that minimum will actually increase, um, to 12 cents, uh, beginning in 2024. So, uh, just be prepared for that. And I think, you know, you can charge whatever you want to it just it, the eight cents is all that's required. Great. And so our team is working with Shannon and the department of revenue to understand the tax deferral piece of this. The law says eight cents can be a tax deferral, but what happens if you want to charge 22 cents, do you have to separate those charges out or all, is that whole charge um, able to be a B&O tax deferral? So our team and Shannon are going to work on getting that answer and we can get that posted online and hopefully updated in a weekly email to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'll get the contact the Department of Revenue. He's usually pretty responsive. So hopefully we can get that to you well ahead of time. I know that you have to prepare, you know, your systems and things like that for this. So I want to be sure that we get that to you quickly. Um, okay, so uh, last year, Ecology presented our draft outreach materials to a bunch of different key stakeholder groups, including uh, grocery, retail, and hospitality associations, uh, local governments, nonprofits, and some business owners. Uh, the feedback from these groups was really critical in developing the final product and making something that's clear. Uh, and now we have a downloadable outreach toolkit translated into 17 different languages. Um, and we hope that you can um, download it, print it, 
uh, use it as you'd like to communicate the new law to your staff and to the public. Um, you can see a few of the sample materials here, including restaurant specific flyers, um, bring your own bag signage, helpful info pre uh, presented in a variety of languages for quick communication, um, et cetera. But um, I'll kind of just go through these so you can see them. This one's um, specific outreach to uh, restaurants, um, or, or sorry, to retailers. Uh, here's a point of sale sign. Um, this is just an example of the way that you can sort of download it and um, individually brand it. Seattle Public Utilities uh, downloaded this and branded it with their logo and put a little QR code that takes them to their website. Um, all of these, we have the InDesign file and the PDF file. So if you have that capacity and capability, you can totally put your business branding on this and uh, you know, make it more useful. Uh, the, we have this bring your own bag signage that you can turn into posters or postcards or um, point of sale signs, whatever uh, you think is helpful. We also have this sign, which looks a little busy, and we're actually going to have a, a version of it uh, that doesn't have the green banner on the side. But when it's blown up, it, it is much more readable. Uh, and when it's actually printed out, the, the goal is that this could be made available if you have a really diverse customer base. Um, and you can just point it or post it at your point of sale. Uh, it communicates the core message. Um, single use plastic bags are banned by Washington state law. Paper and thick reusable plastic bags can be purchased for an eight cent charge. Bringing your own reusable bag is encouraged. And it just says that statement in uh, 17 different languages so that if there is a language barrier, you can kind of quickly communicate what's happening. Um, yeah. So uh, I won't go into too great of detail on the enforcement strategy, except to mention that it will be based on complaints that are received via the displayed form on the Ecology Bag Ban website, and that we will follow up on these complaints um, by working with the business um, where the business operates uh, about the violation. Uh, we'll definitely reach out with multiple written and in-person even attempts to educate about the ban before moving into any kind of official enforcement action or penalties. Um, but this is what it will look like to the user. Um, they would have to go to our website to find this. You know, we're not, <laughs> we're not necessarily out there saying like report on businesses, but um, if someone is, you know, um, interested and, uh, you know, wants to, they can go on and, and do that. Shannon, just a quick question on this. Um, along the lines of enforcement and um, shoring up some of these violations, through COVID, we have um, noticed, especially during the beginnings, an uptick in complaints on restaurants, bar, businesses in general, just because of the general um, nuances behind the new rules that have come. This is going to be new for the public. They might not know that someone that is on EBT can get a bag. What's the process that ecology is going to move forward with uh, making sure that these complaints were founded in, um, <laughs> founded, I guess. Yeah. Right yeah. So I can explain the, the process in a little greater detail. Um, so you, the person would go in, they, this uh, actually has like a little drop down menu. I had a hyperlink in here but it may not work because I'm in presenter mode. Let me see if I can um, name. Um, there's a drop down with the kinds of things that uh, they would report about. Um, they put in a business name and if they type in, it will like, it's supposed to auto populate with, um, oh, there it is. Just takes a minute. It auto populates with like all the different stores so they can find specific. Um, if they manually enter an address, then uh, it's, they have to, um, we would have to go in and verify that it's the correct address. Um, they can add any notes that they want. Then it goes into our, da our database and we follow up on um, A, confirming that the business address even makes sense, that uh, whatever. Um, then we send out a, basically just a letter that says, you know, we received a complaint about this business. Um, here's the new elements of the law, if you're unaware. Um, here's our contact info. Um, and but all of this is date logged. And so um, we actually, even if we re received another complaint on the same business the next day, we wouldn't follow up with the second letter until 30 days after the first one was sent. Um, and so that get, we're hoping between each step to give businesses plenty of time to receive and re respond to the first letter. Um, if a second complaint's received after that 30 day period, we would send a second letter 
um, all the way up to a third warning letter that's that basically um, informs the, the potential for penalties. Um, after that, we could end up having to like visit the business and, and talk with them in person and see what's going on, how we can help. Um, if there is repeated ongoing non-compliance, we would, we would move forward with enforcement, which can be up to a $250 penalty uh, per day of violation. Um, but the goal is really not to ever get to that point. We really want people to understand the law. I'm, it's very difficult for people to balance all of these kinds of things. And we just wanna make sure that um, people have the information they need. It's definitely new. It's gonna certainly be new to most of our uh, east side businesses uh, where there haven't been local bag bans in place. And so um, the goal really is education and um, there's plenty of uh, steps in the process to allow for that kind of communication. Um, so I'll go back to the presentation and I'm, we can answer any other questions about that. Um, you know, I want people to feel comfortable <laughs> with that process. So, okay. Um, so in this presentation, which I'll again provide to Samantha to share with all of you, there are links to our website, uh, the link to join our listserv um, and our outreach toolkit. That outreach toolkit, like I said, um, you can uh, download as a zip file. If people have trouble downloading it, I do have an alternate link and they can email me about that, but most people haven't had very much trouble. Um, you can also contact me if you're looking for manufacturers and distributors of compliant bags. Uh, the list that I have is somewhat informal uh, and may not be entirely complete, but it may be a good start if you're struggling to find someone um, and we try to keep it as detailed as possible. Um, and so even though this is a little out of the scope of uh, what we were talking about, I do want to cover some of the new plastics laws that were passed under um, Senate Bill 5022 this year um, in the legislature. Uh, these will definitely affect a lot of the same types of businesses. And um, I just want to give a, a quick overview of how they're going to go. So um, these were passed and now they're codified in RCW 70A 245-OAO. And so if anyone wants to check that out. You can, but I'll cover it today a little bit. So um, beginning in 2022, single use items can no longer be automatically provided to customers at dine-in and takeout establishments. Instead, the customer has to either directly request the item or the business has to offer it and the customer verbally confirms that they want or need it. Uh, the new law includes utensils, straws, condiment packages, cold cutlets. It applies to all food service businesses, including institutional cafeterias, um, but not including most healthcare facilities. Um, items can also be made available in a self-service bin so that customers can choose only the items that they want. However, they can no longer be bundled or packaged together in the like little film thing or the napkin wrap. Um, so we'll be convening stakeholders in the very near future and would love uh, anyone who's in, in this group and interested in engaging with that process um, as we review draft outreach material as much as we did with the bag ban um, and create another outreach toolkit for this law. So um, I provided links to the single use serviceware on request website. Um, the listserv is basically just our bag band listserv, but it's gonna be renamed and repurposed for single use plastic laws in general. Um, and so uh, please feel free to join that. And then- yeah, I would just say, um, Shannon, just right there, available upon request. The law actually does allow uh, a member of our team to offer a spoon for napkin. So I think that verbiage should be um, edited to reflect that. And thank you for bringing this up. This is something that the team uh, is working on. Um, of course, we've shared with our members this is coming, but now we're gearing up for January 1st. So we'll definitely be focusing on education and more um, information on this. So thank you. Awesome, thank you. I think that's a good note. Um, and yes, you're correct. It, uh, it can be offered. The customer just has to positively affirm that they do want it. Um, so uh, it can't just be automatically included in the order. Um, okay, so then I'll very quickly, because this is a little less relevant, but maybe relevant to some members, um, work is underway to prepare for the new post-consumer recycled content requirements and package materials. Um, those recycled content percentages increase over time. Um, this is kind of like a, a timeline of the way that those increase. This really affects manufacturers more than it would affect uh, most businesses, uh, I think, in this group. But 
um, just something to be aware of that this is going to be happening for you know the next decade or so. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. We um, were heavily engaged in this piece of legislation and are heavily engaged in this conversation as it's happening outside of the legislature and are a part of uh, the communication. So thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I, there, there is another point of contact in ecology that is actually implementing this new law. And so um, I've provided her contact information at the end of this as well if people have questions about it. Um, so the last thing is um, in 2023, new vans will begin phasing out expanded polystyrene or EPS. Uh, this begins in June of 2023 with packaging peanuts and expands in 2024 to recreational coolers and a number of different food service containers. Um, so we can, there, again, there's another ecology contact that's gonna be sort of managing this piece of the legislation, but um, I've got her contact info in there as well. So yes, if you have any questions about any of these items or of course about the bag ban or the single use food service wear uh, piece, please contact me or any of these ecology staff members. Um, and I just really appreciate the time to speak today and clarify any questions. Um, and so I will open it up if you have any additional remarks. And Yeah, just really quickly, um, thank you again for uh bringing up all of the things that are coming. So we appreciate that. I think let's use our time today just to answer uh, the bag van questions only because that is the first to be implemented. And we'll note all the questions that we're getting on um, the affirmative service where, uh, and I will make sure that I can personally answer those uh, for everyone who's asking those questions. I will make sure to get back to you all. All right, so some of the questions we have are, what is the size range for a small paper bag? Um, so a small paper bag is pretty much defined as anything smaller than the large barrel paper bags that are 882 uh, cubic inches or larger. Um, and those do not require the fee, but they do require the same post-consumer recycled content percentages. Um, and so that's just something to pay attention to as you're procuring those bags. You can charge the fee for them as well. I want to make that clear, but you're not required to charge the fee for any bags smaller than the large barrel paper bags. What would you recommend for a restaurant using delivery with no contact? So this is an issue that has come up a lot. And um, unfortunately, there are there was no real provision for this in the law and there, there haven't been rulemaking efforts for it, but um, uh, I think that there, this is something that businesses are going to have to work with these deliver, third party delivery services on um, to come up with a fee system that makes sense for the way that they package their products for delivery. There's no specific system laid out uh, for that, but they could you know, establish a flat rate based on the dollar amount of the purchase maybe a fee assessed after the transaction, similar to the way you tip a driver or uh, a ratio of bags charged for items ordered. You can even charge a flat rate of like a dollar that just covers um, the amount, any amount of bags that you might have to use. Um, we can't really dictate how you should do this and the food delivery options are different enough from restaurant to restaurant that it'll have to be addressed on a case by case basis, but it is the restaurant that is ultimately responsible for assessing the fee. And if we received a complaint or something, it would be the restaurant that we would work with. Is there a list of municipalities that accept compostable bio bags in their yard waste containers? There's not a list of municipalities necessarily. Um, you would have to just work with the composting facilities in your area. Like I said, most of the ones in the King County area do accept it. Um, and I think some of those requirements are shifting and changing. I don't want to say for sure that none of the other facilities accept them. But last I understood and checked, especially on the east side, um, there's, there's just not the composting infrastructure for it. And just a reminder for everyone, this uh, single-use plastic bag ban uh, starts October 1st? It does, that yes. That's correct. And... Um, so one question is to clarify, the small bags also need to contain 40% recycle fiber, recycle fiber content? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And they um, you know, need to have the, that percentage printed somewhere on the exterior of the bag. Um, 
Lisa, I do see some of the questions around food safety. And as our association lead on food safety, I would also agree. Um, I would not recommend a restaurateur, hotelier, any food establishment to take a reusable bag from a customer behind the counter and uh, bag the, the food that yourself. That is just a lot of cross-contamination liability. So if there is a customer who would prefer you uh, have them bag it themselves, that's an option. I Right now, I, I'm not sure how the best way to ask that while someone calls in and comes and picks up their, their food, but I would not recommend a, a food establishment to bring that um, reusable bag across the counter. So thank you for asking and, and notifying that in the chat. Yeah, and you know, on that note, I think there are, the whole reuse sector is, is fairly new. There haven't been a ton of laws passed even nationwide about this. And so I think we're gonna see a lot of services uh, developing and um, addressing this issue of how can we incorporate reuse into delivery and into pickup uh, while maintaining food safety uh, as a priority. And I don't know what that will look like. I think it's going to be an interesting area for innovation and it's going to require some trial and error, but definitely want to echo Samantha's um, statement that, you know, of course, safety is a priority. Uh, we definitely encourage people to, to bag their own if, if that's more comfortable. Um, as far as uh, allowing customer reuse of bags, uh, businesses are required to allow customers to use reusable bags, but if they feel more comfortable, even in a grocery setting, having them bag their own, if they have staff that are uncomfortable handling people's reusable bags, that's okay, and they can ask customers to uh, bag their own. Yeah, I think the last question we have is, so if we don't receive USPS mail at a restaurant location, we would have no idea if the observation is correct. It wouldn't go to the main main point of contact address in the state state system? Um, okay, that's a really good question. So we have the, the addresses that we source all come from uh, either the DOR's database or from uh, the NAICS database. And uh, if we couldn't get in contact with someone, the third letter is sent via certified mail. And so it has like a, a you know, if the, we would get some kind of confirmation that it was received. If we didn't receive that confirmation um, before the, the actual enforcement step begins, there is a, a in-person in confirmation required where we would show up, try to work with the business owner, make sure that they were aware that this is happening. We definitely don't want people to have never seen this coming <laughs> before they you know, are suddenly facing fines. Um, but we hope that before, before that point, we can make them aware of it. We're hoping to get the word out as much as possible so that there aren't complaints and this isn't an issue. Um, but yes, the, um, we would make every effort possible to get in touch with the business first. Um, we just I did. I did see a question in there around the intent of the law. So I just wanted to reiterate the intent of the law from the legislature was to reduce the single use plastic bags in our um, garbage system and that float around. You see them on sidewalks and streets. So um, while this is a new layer to doing business, I will say the way that it is written does give our members and food establishments the leeway to charge now for the, the products that we're giving out. So it does allow you to recoup the cost for the bags that you um, before may have not been charging for uh, without you being in the hot seat. Now uh, you can blame the government <laughs> and ecology for making you charge. So uh, while it is um, another layer to your point of sale system and that interaction with that customer, it is now law and um, something that we can just point to and, and share with guests that um, it wasn't our choice, it was someone else's and we're going along with it to make sure we're in compliance. I think one last thing, Shannon, that just would I would really like clarification on within the bill. It did say uh, that we had a year to use inventory. Um, it, this might not be a huge issue for our establishments because our uh, stock rooms aren't giant like a grocer. However, we do probably have a couple boxes left of those single use t-shirt bags just because you order in a, in a three or three month increment. Um, what, what is the What's the latest on inventory? I'm a little confused on when do we have to use that, that inventory up by? 
So technically, um, technically that uh, sort of grace period or um, period that was written in for people to use up inventory, that was not part of the governor's extension and delay of the law. It technically passed in June, uh, that, that time period by which inventory was supposed to be used up. Um, we understand that throughout the pandemic, people have had to source more bags and that the law wasn't in place. We obviously do not want people to throw those bags away or waste them. Um, we would like people to use up their inventory. The expectation is that people ideally would make the transition to the new uh, rules of the law beginning October 1st. If we receive complaints about inventory or about um, plastic bags still being used and we reach out to the business, this is where this communication piece come, becomes critical. You know, it may be that we ask, it's going to be case by case. It may be that we ask for receipts or invoices that show when they were purchased, you know, to make sure that people didn't just go buy up a bunch of bags, you know, right before uh, it passed, but, or right before, you know, the, um, the, the actual effective date. But um, it's going to be case by case. There, there is not an official, like, use up your inventory by this date. People are expected to comply by October 1st. But again, we want to get at the intent of the law. We definitely don't want plastic waste. Um, we want people to use it up. If people want to recycle those bags, um, they can work with plasticfilmrecycling.org. And um, if, I, there are programs that will accept that if you want to, if you don't want to deal with the customer confusion and things like that. But um, yeah, that's, that's the intent. Uh, we would definitely work with you. It just may be that you have to require some kind of documentation or something like that. So in the communications piece that goes into um, if somebody has been having supply issues, getting these products in, in stock has been a problem for some of our, our members. Um, is that communications piece with you guys part of it? Yes, I mean, we would like for those people to be working with us now and um, so that we can try and put you in touch with or give you our supplier and uh, distributor lists and hopefully get you in touch with someone that you can supply the bags from. Um, the expectation is that people do find a way to source these bags by October 1st. Um, but again, uh, we, we understand there have been supply issues and we want to provide all the resources we can. So um, I can make that uh, manufacturer and distributor list available um, and people can reach out also and let me know if they're still having trouble finding someone. And uh, would you suggest an entire station for customers to bag everything um, themselves if they bring their own bags? Um, I, I can't really make a suggestion like that. You know, every business is different and I want to leave it open to, you know, how, how a business owner runs their establishment. Um, you could do that. Uh, and I want to make people as, as comfortable as possible. Uh, their staff, I know that there are concerns. I do want to say that there, there have been multiple statements and studies released by the CDC and several other um, publications that have indicated there's um, they, they do not believe there's any risk of uh, transmission of the virus via reusable bags. We're trying to uh, just encourage that people wash them and all of our outreach materials uh, for the public, you know, reiterate that fact. Um, and, you know, just kind of common sense measures, washing your hands, washing the bags. But um, again, if people are uncomfortable, that's perfectly okay. And uh, you could set up some kind of customer bagging station if that was yeah shannon just to to add on to that so the new um, af um affirmative service where we'll call it a uh, law that will go into effect january 1st um only requires that a that a customer um says yes i need a fork or um chopsticks or a spoon i think a lot of times right now we're uh, sending a lot of things to go for home and the the intent of the law is to reduce some of that extra um product that we're sending home with customers and on the other side we'll save money um, we won't have to buy as much product hopefully so um a, a self-service service station would be great those little containers that you see um out, let's say at a taco time lobby, those are um, allowed under the law. So having your own service station is a great alternative instead of having your staff have to man something and ask all of those questions. So great question, great solution. And those, you know, those self-service stations, I know there have been concerns about 
um, potential, you know, risk for uh, just other people touching. Uh, there are uh, products designed now to single release um, from containers. And um, I think people are, again, this is one of those sectors that as it's developing, as we are building this uh, sort of culture of reuse, I think people are getting innovative and developing products that um, prioritize safety and make that uh, more possible. So um, definitely look into those kinds of things, um, those kinds of products that help you to uh, make a self-service station a little bit more sanitary. And um, I think that's a great option. Okay. We uh, don't have any more questions about bags. And if you have questions about the straws and the single use, uh, utensils. Um, we're going to get back to you on those. We're ca we've captured all the questions in the chat. Um, thank you so much, Shannon. If anybody missed any part of this, we will have this up online uh, later on today. Or if you want to listen to it, listen to it in your car, just go to your favorite podcast uh, supplier and type in Washington Hospitality Association. And that should be up by the end of the day too, along with, um, and we will have the presentation along with the video on our YouTube page. So thank you all so much for joining us today. And with that, if do you have any last words? Um, just please sign up for our listserv if you'd like to continue to receive updates and feel free anytime to reach out via email or phone. Um, I'll make this presentation available to Samantha so you can also post that to your members and um, we are definitely wanna help. So reach out whenever you can. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.